Wiping the sleep out of the Vizalis is Bly. Drinking his tea and having a snack is Clem. Guys, we are here with glittering ashes to kick off Group B of the Pigsty Festival. That's right, we've got Bly in the top right side representing Penta. And his opponent in the bottom left side representing Team Liquid, one of the most famous teams through all of StarCraft's history. This is Clem. And this is kicking off, of course, a four-man group to see who else will be joining those other guys in the round of eight to fight for that prize pool and everything else. For those of you just tuning in at this point, we have just today crossed a big benchmark in the Pigsty Festival. It is a week-long 24-7 stream where we do a whole bunch of circus acts. We put pro gamers into a bunch of weird situations, make them play all sorts of strange scenarios and, oh, every evening we also play a very competitive pro tournament. Started with just a $2,000 prize pool, so we're absolutely floored. We had such good players sign up and be able to play it. Uh, I say sign up. I, I may have offered them all, you know, promises. I may have made promises, but they've signed up nonetheless, and we've managed to double the prize pool today. So we have hit $4,600 prize pool. So we, we initially jumped it from 2000 to 2300 getting prize pool right down to the third and fourth place spots in the groups. We've just doubled the prize pool for everyone in the tournament. That's been a big uh, thing that the community has done. So big thanks to everyone who did drop by the Twitch chat in the last few days and contributed. Uh, of course, uh, a reminder to anyone who is watching live, we are very much focused on donations for this event as we're trying to pass on 50% of all of those to the pro gamers and that way we dodge that Twitch tax. Uh, if you're playing subscriptions or cheers or anything else, of course, Twitch is getting a big, big chunk of that. Everything does make a difference and we appreciate it all. And the fact that so many people are, are tipping in uh, 2021, when not many people do tip, most people do, you know, prefer to sub or, or use a cheer or one of these Twitch uh, kind of endorsed payment methods, which they can uh, dip their hands into. It makes a big, a big, big uh, difference. So thank you everybody for the love. And uh, let's get into this match. It's Terran versus Erg, and it is on Stripper Booty, aka Glittering Ashes, as uh, Clem picked this as the first map. Now, Bly has picked Pride of Altaris as map two, and map three, if we get there, is going to be Hardwire. So all new maps, I, I, we're definitely going to see Pride of Altaris, which is very interesting. That is a map with a full gold base, and Bly picked it. Uh, no surprises, maybe. <laughs> definitely one I think Bly will be happy to take that gold base behind a proxy Ravager or something like that. But for now, it's got to deal with the Clem Reaper. And I don't know if you guys have watched Serral stream at all, but... Serral, he looks a little angry pretty much every time he's dealing with Clem's Reaper. And I think that's that's the best compliment I can give to Clem's Micro, is look at how annoyed Serral is at the start of every Zerg vs. Terran, at just how irritating this Reaper is. He's such a pain in the butt to deal with. In this case, only one kill though, so Belai does defend quite well. Zerglings go out there looking for an idle Reaper that maybe wasn't watching. And he's going to try and think about getting in now. Bly is ready to stop the Reaper on, on the left. Good. Stops the regens. Very nicely done behind this, guys. This is a three racks build. And this is so rare to see in this matchup. But you know what? We recently actually cast Euthermal playing against Reaper, who is a super underrated cheesy boy. A super underrated cheesy lad. So he actually uh, took a map off Euthermal, and Euthermal's response was, let's go three racks. And I, I was thinking about it, and I was like, look, if your opponent... Does an Idus all in? If your opponent's trying to Ling Bane bust, if they're trying to ravage a Ling bust, having three racks bio production is just going to keep you alive without knowing exactly what's happening. So it kind of makes sense for Clem here to bring out what we think of as a Terran vs. Protoss build order and say, that's fine, I'll just do that in this matchup and it's going to keep me completely safe. Now, unfortunately for him, Bly is playing. Actually, you know what? Maybe it is okay. Bly's playing what appears to be two base Muta. But you know what? I think Bly, if he just gets really quick Bane speed, the early pushes won't be as scary. And as Bly, he sees a lot of Marines. He also sees a bunker. Clem a little afraid because his scouting got denied that Reaper. Clem does not know what he's up against. The thing is, right, so fast meter, really good if you can kind of harass, pick away at your opponent, that sort of thing. But also a thing where it struggles to fight Marines front on. And when you've got this many Marines building, I'm like... I get a little bit worried. I'm just kind of like, man, I don't know. Uh, if they can force a fight and you don't quite have enough lings to surround them, you're relying on Bane lings. Well, we know what, how good Clem's splits are. Muters are going to need to get across the map and, and do kind of counterattacks and harassment, really abuse their mobility. So we'll see exactly what the hell goes on there. Third hatchery in the top left side. Obviously, in Evo chambers are just not going to be anything happening in the near future. As one engineering bay goes down. 
And it looks like Clem, he's got a bunker in the main. Oh my god, Clem is literally... Guys, for, for those who are wondering how much Bly has traumatized European players, this is Clem, the best Terran versus Zerg player in the world. He's done a Reaper Scout, built two bunkers, and he's camping on three barracks mass marines in Terran versus Zerg. He scans. Oh, the cheeky Spire placement, not cheeky enough. I was like, dude, this is such a risky Spire placement because that'll get sniped by a drop later on in this game. Like, it will 100% happen. But I was like, well, he just wants it to not get scanned. Unfortunately, it gets clipped by the edge of the scan and immediately Clem moves out, sells a bunker, sells another bunker, and he's going to be moving across the map, dropping a third command center. So he's going to say, look, if I can take the fight to you, that can work out. As I said, though, there's not many lings, not many queens. His muters might have to fight this front on. So Bly up against what is 34 Stim Combat Shields Marines with a handful of units. He needs to make every Bane ling he can. And that's why I was saying, once he knew it was three racks, maybe Clem should have just focused on Ling Bane production just to shut down this push. Because these muters, they're not going to be the best unit in the game right now. Oh, Banes on creep. Okay, the Banes get some good deaths. Not enough, though. Not enough. He loses two muters so far. He's got a few more Bane links. He should survive, should Bly. Just can't chase this too far off creep, I don't think. The Stim will wear off, but... Oh, that focus fire. Oh, and another muter. Gets one muter, gets another muter. That's four muters going down. And this is exactly what you don't want to have happen. The Terran is forced a frontal engagement. Yeah, overall, units lost is, you know, you'd be like, oh, it doesn't seem to. No, it's really bad. Each meter is 200 resources. So you need to kill at least four Marines per mutalisk, which isn't going to happen in a head-to-head fight for that to be worth it. Now, there's only three muters, not even enough to one-shot SCVs. They fly in the main. There are Lings ready on the right side. And remember, don't ever count Bly out. We've seen Bly make comebacks in a more ridiculous manner than a lot of players out there are capable of. Uh, SCV is not able to mine that gas, so we might lose the gas, guys. A big Ling run by. The Marines are all up to the left on his third base. They're not here right now. Ling's getting in on that natural. Some of them are just going to pull on out. He doesn't want to throw those Lings away. He gets a few Marines in the natural. Five SCVs. Not too bad here for Bly. And he gets... Oh, wait, his other Lings run back in the third. Dude, Bly causing a bit of a ruckus. He's going to take the turret out in the third base as well. That turret will burn down. Unless he's very quick to repair it, which he is not. Seven muters are in production. He's trying to go mass mute. He's only on 51 drones. Bly is only on 51 drones and he's prioritizing muter production. I mean, this man wants to make fight fight with his mutt mutt. He not want to, he not want make economy. He does a lot of damage there, but Bly's economy is not bigger than Clem's right now. He's taken some great trades in that last little bit, especially with the SCV kills coming in, of course. 11 workers to none. But Clem is not far behind in workers. And the creep spread is, is it's decent, but it's not absolutely godlike. Two Banelings are going to roll in. There's a Widow Mine. That Widow Mine is a hero. The Banelings are going to roll in, and the Widow Mine defends. The Muters, of course, were trying to distract. Now, that is a very exposed engineering bay. Clem here opting for what we call the I want to lose my upgrades engineering bay placement. Is it a trap, though? Is it a bait? Watch out, Bly. Ooh. Oh, Widow Mine's all around as well. Oh, oh he's going to take out a few of those Marines. Loses a Muter, but gets four or five Marines, so not bad. Not too bad for that fight. Plus one armor there. No second engineering bay, right? This is all on one eBay. So this is kind of a, a budget setup for Clem. Oh, the Widow Mine recharges just in time. And does actually at least kill that turret? Yes, he does. The muters on the right side, they did not have an overseer with a bit of a mistake here. Fort Bly, you could tell he took a Widow Mine shot and wasn't even able to return fire because there's no armory just yet. Double Evo Chamber goes down. I said those upgrades weren't going to be happening for a long time. Well, nine minutes. Apparently is when it's time to do it, says Bly. The Lings are going to run on in. Widow Mine does hit SCVs just as much as Zerglings. And the Muters, by the way, just took out the Engineering Bay at the same time. He was not... Oh, and he denied plus one armor, actually. Sorry, guys. I didn't even realize that at first. He did deny the plus one armor before it finished. His Lings don't get that much damage. But Bly trying to create a chaotic situation. Now, for those wondering, how good is Bly's Mutaling Bane? It's pretty damn good, guys. It's not going to be as uh, perfect with the frontal engagements. But what Bly's very good at is the backstabs. High risk, high reward maneuvers. He likes to grab large chunks of his army and run around and backstab your economy. And usually what I kind of visualize Bly's strategy in Mutaling Bane vs. Bio is he wants to damage your economy enough that he can shepherd you into going all in on creep into Mass Baneling. And the moment you dive deep on creep against Mass Baneling, Bly wipes your army despite you having a bigger one and, and things look really nasty. Oh, another Widow Mine. Oh my God, that Widow Mine. And another Widow Mine. It's been so effective. 
He needs to, to swap into like Ling Run buys or something. These Widow Mines are just everywhere. Clem has, has put so many Widow Mines around this map. He's even got one there for the Muters. This is fantastic setups. He realizes that he's just got to hang on, drag it out, and just keep preparing for these endless run buys that Bly's going to throw his way. Bly going for plus two Muter, attack, Muter attacks. He's at 19. And he does see a Widow Mine out there. He's going to be able to pick that up. Individual Widow Mines, of course, can be cleaned up. Ling's running in. Once again, that Widow Mine could work against the SCVs. Another six. That's a very efficient run by, guys. Muta's out in the middle of the map, getting pushed back. Those plus one attack marines. Their upgrades are still really sad right now. Clem has not started plus two attack yet. And just rem a reminder, guys, these guys, they've been nice enough to turn on their cameras. We've got these guys up nice and early this morning to play this tournament, making sure that they dodge those qualifiers that are on later on today and throughout the rest of this week. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, big Widow Mines. Uh oh, blah, blah, blah. He's got to keep those muters safe now. These are very val valuable units. That's not going to work out. There's a Thor and a bunch of Marines right there. He's, he's getting cornered a little bit. There's, there's, oh my God, there's mines on every side. Another mine hit this time on the Overseers, at least. He does take one Widow Mine on the way out. But that's a total of 14 muters that have gone down this game. Bly taking fifth base on the top left, or, and a sixth base on the right side. And Clem's going to start answering these little pinprick attacks, little Widow Mines. Some, I say little, but big potential payoff. We've all lost games to Widow Mine drops. Unless you're a Terran player, it's a little bit rarer to get Widow Mine dropped in TVT as the SCVs are a bit tankier, but... Got to watch out for this. The Overseers and the Muters do come on in. Widow Mine does take a Muter. And gets two drones there as well. Not too bad. Keeping keeping Bly busy. Upgrade advantage is not there for Clem. Keep that in mind. This army, it's not as powerful as it maybe could be. It's still a crazy Marine count though. Up against what is mostly Muters and Banelings. Now, if you don't have a lot of Zerglings in there as well, if the Marines are well spread enough, it, it kind of feels like it can be hard for the Zerg to get the right engagement. If you can get the Terran to clump up, then it'll work out. He's going to go in with just a few Banelings to start. Gets one Widow Mine set off. Gets a few units. Banelings get seven SCVs with a run by. Ooh, Banelings going in in these small packs. He picks off a Widow Mine, but he takes a big Thor shot and a Widow Mine on the left side. Bly's got to give up this base. I think, yeah, he's, he's already given up the bottom right. He gives up that base. Muters are going across the map. He's going to use his rally to defend both players on their way to two, two upgrades. The Muters are going to dive in here. Oh, he does get that Widow Mine just before it fires. And he's going to get the turret. Oh, not bad. The plus two Muters working some magic right now. Clem's economy looking a little worse for wear. But Bly's economy, nothing too, you know, nothing to write home about either. As the Muters, ah, oh, they're, they're taking some awkward trades. Is it going to be enough if he can get rid of the Widow Mines before they fire? But oh, he takes two big Widow Mines. Clem taking some big hits. Two random Marines on the left side causing him a, a bit of trouble as well. The Muters gets 25 SCV kills. A lot of those Muters, if they can disengage for 30 seconds, they can regen. But they're not going to get a chance to, at least not quite a few of them. He goes back in. I mean, he's going to get more SCVs. But a turret finishes. That one dies. I mean, the Muters are tearing Clem's economy apart. I just, is it actually worth it? Does Bly have enough economy to absorb this? He himself is only at 65. He's going to go in with another run by on the left side as these muters just will not leave. I mean, as much as Bly's losing muters, Clem's got to be a little triggered himself. SCV's going down to friendly fire widow mines. The widow mines have stopped a lot of the run buys, but they've also killed a lot of their own units. It's very even in supply right now. Bly has dragged this game down into the mud. And Clem, he's not as comfortable in this sort of game as Bly is. That being said, Bly's got to get these hatcheries back up. This Widow Mine on the right is going to deny yet another attempt to take a base. The Muta Count back up to 18. 2-2 two, two upgrades will be catching up for the Zerg in a moment. But Bly's going to lose a base on the left, and that's going to put him back in dire straits economically. Five is on the way for Bly. He'd love to get up to Ultras, I think, on this map. This map too big to play Broodlords. They're just not going to be able to do anything on this map. And 12 drones and a hatchery. Ooh, drop on the right. Well, at least the muters will clean this up pretty efficiently. They do outnumber that. And we've got some Zerglings in the middle of the map looking for the counterattack opportunity. What is this in the top right? Empty medevac. I think that was from a Widow Mine drop earlier. Ooh, if he gets the Thors, that would be massive. And look at that. He's spread out. The Thors are in splash damage mode. Splash damage mode is not that effective at killing Thors when they're spread as well as Bly spread them. And look at that. The, the medevacs go down. Both Thors go down. That's a good trade. The Thors are there to stop the muters being able to clump up in a big fight. On their own, in that splash damage mode, they don't do that much. Uh-oh, not a good fight for Bly, though. These Ling's getting uh, kind of aggroed into a choke point. 
Bly has the right base up. Oh, the Widow Mines. Honestly, the random Widow Mines seems to be Clem's recipe for success in this game. He's like, look, as long as I keep enough Widow Mines blocking bases, harassing, and also defending run buys, this 11 kill Widow Mine, for instance, it's going to work out okay for me. And Bly runs forward, does find a couple of Marines there, almost gets a medevac. Ooh, that Marauder barely escaping. 11 more muters? He just went back up to 26 muters. Bly is like... I'm just going to make so many muters, uh, and it's going to be a nightmare for you to deal with. Overseer's heading out to that left side of the map. Cleans up a Widow Mine there. Looks like he avoided taking a shot from it since his muters have not taken all that splash. There's not that many Marines here. Bly's actually thinking about fighting the Marines with just muters. A uh, bit of a wild decision. Zerglings will clean up that Widow Mine, but more Bio is here to deny the base. He's going to take the right side. That is a six mineral, one gas base. It's kind of a three-quarter mineral base, half gas base. And, ooh, gets a few pickoffs. He's being so annoying with these units. Ooh, he does get that Widow Mine just before it fires. Another Metavac. Another Widow Mine. Ooh, Clem is reeling right now. The pressure from Bly with these muters. Dude. Oh, old, old man experience getting in there. He even pulls four muters to the left, drags the Widow Mines away from the center of the pack, cleans the turret up, but the Thor on the high ground and the Metavac boosts it down. Those young boy hands. He's not going to go down out without a fight. And look at that. Oh, watch out. Marines there. A lot more muters just went down. I feel like every single time Clem looks like he's about to get way ahead, he, he just loses another 10, 15 SCVs. But he kills a lot of muters doing it. And Bly's economy is never gigantic. So it's it's all uh, this game is always in question. It's always in question. Who's going to win? There's 3-3 on the way, but there's also an Ultra Cavern on the way. Bly cannot afford his 3-3 upgrades. He doesn't have a lot of creep spread. I mean, if this was a, a normal Zerg player, I'd be a bit more worried about the lack of creep and upgrades. But he's shown that he can kind of keep Clem's economy down in the mud. And as long as Clem's economy is down low, uh, he, he's fragile. You know, one big misstep and Clem could die. You can see Clem's so cautious with his army because of that, right? Three Banelings for a Widow Mine. A great trade there for Clem. Mutaling does come in on the left side of the map. Does catch this drop. Picks it up, though. He's going to buy some time. And that's all Clem needs to do. As long as he can punish while all these muters are out of position, that'll be good. That gets cleaned up. He takes out the base in the bottom right. Can he take this base out as well? It's a lot of Marauders. That is a lot, a lot of Banelings, though. But there's not much with it. Oh, my God. There's not much with it. That was like 30 Banelings on just Marauders and Thors. Oh, and oh, the Widow Mines in the production. Clem sets up a trap. The muters overwhelm, but they take a beating while doing it. They get that Widow Mine on top of the production, but he's taking so much damage and losing this base. Potentially a fatal blow. Then again, all these SCVs going down. There's more Banelings. Remember, Bly still has two mining bases, and he's got a base going up on the top left as well. And he's actually still got a great work account. I, mean, I don't know. I just I, I thought all those muters were going to die. They're still alive. They're still doing damage, but oh my my god this is so dangerous the muters are so expensive and they're all going down bly this looks so good for these muters for a while i don't think this last part of the fight was good for him i think he just gave up his number one tool that's been keeping him active in this game and in control of this game and now without those muters i think he can't afford to rebuild them i think corruptors a couple corruptors might be an okay call but generally just swapping into ultraling not a bad idea kindness adrenal glands he's stuck on 2-2 versus 3-3 three, three for now but he's got ling bane ultra he does have a new base in the top left he's rebuilding this one let's look at the income graph for the last few minutes of this game or the income tab sorry i should say as apparently the income graph doesn't work on pro 2020 yeah that's a thing uh okay so yeah yeah yeah. it looks like right now with mules clem is is feeling fine that we don't mind oh Oh, that Widow Mine. Sorry, guys. That got 13 kills. I looked away because I thought it was going to die, and it actually did very, very well. It's going to go burrow behind the base. These random Widow Mines, these little squads moving around the map, causing problems. And having lost the muters, will Bly be able to still dance with Clem? Will he still be able to hang on? Oh, he doesn't see this army coming. Clem getting a little bit more confident. The moment the muters aren't in his face, he does find a big bit of damage. Lings run in. They get deflected. And it looks like Clem has finally gained control of this game. Bly has made it messy. He's made it scrappy. Both players have been finding it's hard to, to adapt, especially here on one of these new maps that is so big, so widespread. But the longer the game's gone, the more effective it seems that Clem's macro has been. And now that there's not many air units, he can always pick up and get on out of there. Only a few meters to chase him. Not going to be able to deal with that. You can always just drop on the other side there. Muters do have to pull back. Picks up again, starts retreating home. Planetary in the middle, another command center goes down for Clem right now. 
Clem is up 30 supply, and a lot of that is army supply as well. So if he can bring all of his forces to bear, as good as ultras are, you've got the 3-3 three, three upgrade advantage. You've got plus two vehicle plating, making that Thor, those medevacs a bit tankier, and he's staying active. Because remember, Bly, he's struggling to deal with these Widow Mines. Another Widow Mine there, denying bases. He's so good, his Clement, just leaving Widow Mines everywhere. A thorn in the side of Bly when you've got so much space to cover. Clem said, how can I use this space to my advantage? I'm going to leave Widow Mines all over the map. And it's just going to be a nightmare for you to constantly clean them up. I'm going to push the left, drop the right. Oh, it's a lot of space scales. He's got to get back to the bridge. But he's going to push the right side at the same time. Oh, this army got kind of, not, not quite f 2 but shoved there. It rallied on the wrong way. So he loses a lot of units. Really sloppy from Clem. But does it matter? He's got a base snipe on the right side. He gets a few muters down. He's going to take out that queen as well. Drones hiding, cowering on the right side of the map. Please don't find us. Ah! Zerglings are like, yeah, I don't know if we want to fight behind a mineral line. They're going to try to do it. But as I said, he's got so few muters. He's rebuilding muters. I think at this point, because you've got so few, you're probably better off with corruptors. Just because the, the muters are going to be in such low numbers, you need something tanky that can also slowly kill the medevacs without getting popped. And uh, that, oh, with this base going down, that's it. I think Clem's done it. He snipes this base. His drop in the main does get cleaned up eventually, but look at this. He's even in the third of Bly, which is completely mined out. And Clem, you can see he's feeling it now. You can see it in his camera. He's kind of bopping up and down a little bit. He's looking relaxed. He's looking focused. And uh, it seems like this has been a, an interesting way to start the day for both players. But at the end of it, it is going to be Clem with the massive advantage. Now, that's an interesting push. A three Widow Mine, four Marauder, and a Marine run by that he's just queued to A-move across the map. Zergling's going to deal with that pretty easily. And nice spready there from Black. Oh, that Zergling! Its job was to split. and It goes and lures the Widow Mine shot into its friends. What an idiot. Uh, Ultralisks there. Not Bly being an idiot. It's his Zergling, by the way. Just in case you guys are unclear. In case you misheard that. Maybe English isn't your first language. But it looked like he purposefully split it. And then the Zergling just aggroed on the others, other Widow Mine. Uh-oh. Watch out. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. Ultras are chonky boys. So they do kind of absorb a lot of the Widow Mine splash without that much room for Zerglings to do it. Kalem up 80 supply. And it's just a process of mopping up the Zerg now. Ah, uh, big army for Bly coming in, but look at this. If he can pull up this ramp on the left side, the Thors are going to go down up front, but he's still he's got a good Marauder count. And a healthy Marauder count is a bunch of sad space cows. That's exactly what that leads to. Two red hit point ultras, a couple of very weak muters trying to get out of there. Chunks of ultralists go flying. Bly tries to block the ramp with a whole bunch of fake Bob Marines. Like, hey, my name is Bob. Hey, my name is Bob. Hey, we're real Marines. Totally, man. Uh, Clem does not fall for that one. He ignores them and continues to move forward. And Space Cow chunks littering the map. The Baneling struggling to finish morphing here. And just beautiful macro play in the face of a very scary opponent. And Clem managing to overwhelm Bly in the long game. Alright. What's up, everybody? How the heck are we doing? Down here in the bottom right side, we got Bly. And this is his map pick on Pride of Altara, so we see what he's got in store for us. His opponent in the top left, this is Clem. Now this map does have a different type of little uh, Automaton 2000 here. It's kind of a funny little little robot. It almost looks like a Jester, I find, with its funny little robot arm that's on its head. But uh, I think what's more interesting about Pride of Altaris is the fact that you have this very hard natural to assault. This narrow ramp. Going up into this choked up area. It's hard to get in there. Pretty big main base though. Nidus up there. Very hard to get up to. It's really far from down here in the natural. And then you come down to these the third bases. Which open up a little bit more. But more importantly. Check it. Gold base. Up here. And down here. We knew that Bly wanted to pick this map. And of course he could use this gold base. As a launching pad for roach aggression. Bly did pick this map. I don't think it's surprising that he's picked that one. This is an earlier CV scout for Clem. But remember, where's Clem, you're worried about Proxy Hatch. You're worried about getting cheese. You're worried about so many different things. Are you thinking about the gold base? Have you thought about this map? Do you have enough experience here to know about it? Because I don't think it's a big surprise that Bly goes for this gold base. For those who don't know, it is eight gold mineral patches, not just six, which means you can get more than a full base of mining out of that base. Solid, uh, solid extra 
I can't remember the actual numbers. It's a good jump. 40% bonus? It's something big. And look at that. Second gas. Spawning pool. So Clem sees this and is like, ooh, I'm getting cheesed. It's a roach push. I'm getting proxy hatch ravaged. Guys, he just saw the tells of a proxy hatch ravager. Now, is Clem actually going to proxy hatch ravager? Or is that all for show? Because obviously this is the prox quote unquote proxy hatch. He's putting on gas. He's going to drop a roach horn. Oh, he's going to go for it. Okay, okay, there we go. Keep an eye out, keep an eye out. Wait, no, he's pulling off gas. He's been spotted by a Reaper. He's got two Zerglings going over. He's going to take a third base. It's a fake. He's looking for an overreaction. Clem building his command center on the high ground. He's gone factory up there. Bly's going to wait for a queen before transferring workers down. He's going to take a third. And he's taking a gas just to save the drone for now. Queen will defend the Reaper. All right, so Bly here. He's like, all right, we're going to take the gold. You're going to freak out a little bit, and we're just going to macro up. And that is exactly the case so far. Reaper's going to rotate around. Queen, of course, is nearby. Got to make sure you don't lose these drones. Reaper will be able to interrupt that mining a fair little bit. Link speed's on the way. One gas is mining. Oh, Bly is going to lose a drone if he's not quick. And the queen. Yeah, I think he's got to leave. Oh, good, good spore trick. Good spore trick from Bly here. Okay. Let's see what he can turn this gold base into, because I feel like this is such a good thing to mess the game up. And look at this. Clem, even though he knows there's a gold base, he hasn't seen a lot of drones there, only a few, and he's still worried about getting all in off this. He's going to send some Hellions out, though. Dealing with those will be a high priority, but Ling Speed's finished and a Roach Horn's on the way. So this was fake Ravager all in into what will probably be a real Ravager all in just a few minutes later. And it's, it's those layers of kind of surprising strategies that's very unpredictable and hard to deal with there is a starport on the way hellions do come in what's he managed to kill so far only one zergling there's plenty of lings alive he'd love to surround the hellions you gotta be careful though bly he sees ya banshees a very good choice for safety and that's why i worry about bly committing to to ravage a ling off such a low economy uh i feel like if he was on 40 drones maybe but in this scenario it thinks oh oh clem Clem gets in there very nicely. Now he's going to have to cancel the Evo. He's going to have to cancel the Evo. Oh, no. Okay, the Roaches will at least trap the Hellions, I guess, or kill some of them. Get some of these Hellions down. But now you've seen the Roaches popping out. You can have Banshees in a bunker at home. I think Clem here. I mean, remember that Clem, for those who don't know, we often consider him the best Terran versus Zerg in the world. Incredibly good at the other matchups as well. Recently besting Zest, a PVT killer in uh, Home Story Cup. So this is not a player where you're just going to sit back and play a macro game. I'm amazed that Bly did it in game one with the two base muter opening. But here, he's trying to get him out with the Ravager Ling. I just think with the Banshee there, the Ravagers need to run away. If he commits, he's got to commit hard. Okay, he's going to go in. There's only one Marine in the bunker right now. He's going to bile down the depots. He gets one. Okay, the depots will go down momentarily. The Lings are going to come in. If he can get rid of the Hellions, then the Ling Flood would be good. But there is no Ling Flood. That's the trick. Is he kind of knew this wasn't going to be, be doing crazy damage. He's already gone back to droning. Is this enough damage? I don't think so. Six workers go down. Oh, nice bile. Gets one more SCV. But now he's got to build spores in each base. And he's already down in workers. So I think the gold base here, a, a bit of a gambit for Bly. Hasn't quite paid off here. The spores going down in the main as well. Clem, I think a very well-planned anti-Bly strategy. And you know, it's so funny watching this because I am so convinced more than ever because I know there's going to be someone saying, yo, this, this build didn't look good at all. If if Clem didn't know this was Bly, I actually think like 100% he loses to this build, right? But you can tell he's played so many cups against Bly. He's got so many layers of safety precautions that he's trained into him that are, okay, do this, but wait at a bunker do this but oh wait rush the banshees out asap because the roaches could be coming he's got so many safety precautions built into his play and it's absolutely what you need to do against someone like bly bly is, is such a dangerous guy he's a player who can explode at any moment in any direction he's very good with his all ends he's very good with his flexible play as well and I do like most of all, I gotta say I think we've got to thank Bly so far for taking this beautiful base because this is the most beautiful part of Pride of Altaris. Let's be real. There's a lovely little Zen Garden. Most of it's this disgusting Protoss architecture. And it's not that I'm, it's not that I think it's disgusting. It is kind of cool, right? All this cool Protoss. There's just too many maps we've had that have it. I'm like, oh, I get it. There's a bunch of different types of pylons around the map. Show me some more beautiful gardens and trees and forests and stuff, you know? Show me some more beautiful koi ponds and all that sort of stuff. 
Funnily enough, uh, Zen had some beautiful koi ponds. It was probably the most unzen like map of all time. It was stressful to play that map. Six gases? No, four gases. Okay, so it looks like Bly's going to try to play Roach Ravager, maybe. Mm, try to claw it back. Where are the upgrades at? So it looks like 1 1 hasn't started yet for Clem. He'll be starting that soon. He's got a lot of gas, so his mineral gas balance a little bit out of whack, but as he starts tank medevac and upgrades, of course, he'll be able to chew through that gas bank. Double Evo Chamber on the way for Bly as well. And that Banshee coming on in. Okay, so so Clem here, I mean, these Banshees are going to be so annoying. Clem Banshees are annoying usually, but off this start, honestly, if Bly can make this even look competitive from here, I will be massively impressed because he doesn't have creep connecting his bases. His gold base still sticking out like a sore thumb. An obvious point of contention that Clem can push on at any moment. And I wonder if Bly is planning to give that up and fall back to this base if it gets in trouble. Because that's what I'd be trying to do here. He does have the boost of the gold minerals, which is allowing him to kind of claw his way back in terms of upgrades are in time. Roach speed is there. He is getting that extra hatchery. The army, though, I don't think it can be stopped. I don't know, man. Actually, they don't have upgrades for the tanks yet. Oh, there's just no answer to the Banshees. Without answer to the Banshees, the tanks can just waltz forward. These Marines don't even have Stim yet, but they will in a second. Stim about to kick in, as will Shields. The Marine tank just launching on forwards. Roach speed's not quite done either. I think give up the base, fall back might be Bly's best option, but it is the best of a bad set of options. After he went for a big gamble early on, it did not pay off. And oh no! Four overlords popping on top of the marines. Ah, uh, Yauchis. Okay, drones there pulling back to that base as well. The Banshee does clean up these drones. A few more going down in that base. The Queen's going to take down the Banshee as well. Marines and tanks coming forward. Ooh, okay, triple bile on the tank. The other tank goes down. The marines will get pushed back for now. There is another tank back there in the top left of our screen. The Ravagers will get the triple bile on the tank. Oh, wait, they only did the double bile. Ooh. Ah, wow, 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 wow. Each Ravager, remember, costs as much as a Mutalisk. They're a very expensive unit to go down there. Lots of Marines, tanks, medevacs coming forward. The Lings and the Ravager is going to try and fight this back, but there's just too much Terran. Fourth Command Center is on the way for Clem, and he will be able to take this out. And you know what? Just good thinking by Clem in this map to just from the very beginning uh, go and, and scout that gold base, checks it out. And I think as soon as this game's over, we're going to rewind it. Because I want to check his scouting pattern early. Did he look around his base for proxy hatch? Because normally, Bly takes a map off Clem very regularly. Sometimes two or three maps with proxy hatch Ravager. It's one of his best all-ins in this matchup. He has so many variations. Was not able to trick Clem in this game, though. GG's. Let's do that quick rewind here, guys. I am very curious to see what the hell happened there at the start of this game. I don't think I was focusing too hard on it. Let's look at Clem's vision. See how quickly did he clue on to what was going on. So if we look at Clem's vision in the early stages of this map. Um, the right side is live, right? Dot? Okay, I always forget. Cool. Yeah, he just goes straight there. He doesn't even check both, both hatch locations. Immediately Reaper goes there. And he just, the thing is, because he scouted early enough... With the SCV, he sent it out on like 17 or I think 18 supply. He basically is about to go for the command center. And even before that, he's like, all right, let's put the command center down. 400 minerals, no hatchery. Nope. SCV goes back. Depot, command center on the high ground. He actually, he, th he thinks about going second gas and he changes his mind. Goes command center, then the factory and the second gas. But very clever play from Clem. And that is partially, uh, I think, because he sees the pool and the gas were not that early. So he knows it's a hatchery first. Wherever it is, roaches aren't going to be arriving that quick. Very calm, collected play from Clem. Shuts down Bly, gets the 2-0, and goes through to the winner's match.